Good morning. I don't know about you, but with this microphone, I feel like breaking into song. Uh, Life uh, is a cabaret. Oh, charm. There, oh, I knew you knew that song. Good. This is great. Excellent. Terrific. Thank you. Well, I have been spending time looking at your website over Perfect. the past couple days, and it's really, it's really a wonderful site full of all sorts of great information. I noticed, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, that there are other sites that look similar to yours, to the casual uh, peruser of the internet. How do you get your site to pop out? Yeah. Uh, you know, we're living in extremely exciting times. And like the cliche, there are a thousand flowers blooming out there with a lot of people doing really interesting things. And the essence of what Adam's doing and what we're doing and, and a lot of these people that you refer to out there is really empowering folks to take control of their health life and their wellness. And, and I think this is just an unbelievable trend that technology has blown out. But at the end of the day, it also means there's a tremendous amount of cacophony. There are a lot of these kind of little one-off places, which is often very difficult to get attention. There are really three things that we bring to bear, I think, which is very important and very distinctive. First of all, we are now the largest collection of disease and condition and wellness-specific websites anywhere on the web. And so you don't feel like you're in a chapter of a book when you're in Health Central. You really feel like you're in an experience which is for you on your terms. But I think secondly, and very importantly, it's really about people. It's really about individuals who are sharing their experiences in very, very powerful ways in real life. And when you aggregate the quantity that we have, what you really are then able to do is have astounding quality. You really understand what people are saying, you really understand what they do, and you literally have an ability to constantly make, in real time, decisions in people's voices and in their words to make very, very powerful and unique experiences. So we've been on this very large trajectory over the last couple of years of gathering these audiences where we marry very high quality content generated now by what is the largest collection of bloggers anywhere on the planet. We've got 3,000 health bloggers, which we actually vet. So it's not just kind of the unwashed masses, but we put some quality to it. We have this collection of what we call expert patients, which are people who are rock stars in their areas of condition who write for us. And so this marriage of great storytelling and great content with the ability for people to connect and share their experiences is really like, unlike anything that's out there right now. And again, the size has this ability for us to understand people on their terms and the way they speak, and it makes our products better. And by the way, it also helps us, I think, on the monetization side because we're an ad-based business, and our ability to get good advertisers in front of the right and relevant people not only help people aggregate their truths well, but have made a very sustainable business model, which is quite rare right now in the social media space. Now, I know in, in my industry, there is plenty of room for CNN and CBS and NBC, et cetera, et cetera. There's enough you know, money to, for all of us to exist. In your industry, does there have to be one winner, or can there be a lot of different sites that perhaps offer somewhat similar services? Look, I have to tell you, I mean, I come from the news business. The idea that there will be a thousand news experiences in the media world, I just don't think is right. I think there's going to be certain areas of consolidation, as there is everywhere. But the beauty of the internet, again, is that you can aggregate so many different experiences. It's not a winner-take-all kind of a situation. I mean, in our sites, we don't think in terms of our lives as being a walled garden. The purpose is not to lock people down. The purpose is just to be on the side of the users. We have partnerships with people who, in the old world, you would have called, quote, unquote, competitors. But they do fabulous stuff that help people in specific conditions. If they do things that can lift the boats, that's great. If we can do things that lift the boats, that's great. And in that kind of environment, first and foremost, the user wins. And then people will consider us one of their trusted environments. It's not going to necessarily be the only trusted environment, but it'll be a significant part of their conversation. I mean, that was something astounding that you said to me on the phone yesterday, um, that you said that you will link to a competitor's site if you think they have some great information. I mean, I would never get on TV and say, oh, you've got to watch that thing on CBS. Well, you what probably should. Report. You but think you so? Yeah, you probably Maybe I'll should. try that. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about users and individuals, and people want the best information to take control of their lives, particularly for something which is as profound and as emotional and as scary as health. And they will give you tremendous credit for knowing that you're really on their side and you're not just trying to lock them down in an experience for the sake of that experience. Now, in the Marcus Welby days, and I say that hope, hoping that everyone knows who Marcus Welby is, I'm always astounded that people younger than me have never heard of him. Do you guys know Marcus Welby when I say that name? You got a clue? Okay, good. Makes me feel uh, better. So, in the Marcus Welby days, people just listened to their doctor and did what they said, and there wasn't really an opportunity to get a whole lot of information on your own, which is why I'm, the name of my book is What Your Doctor right. Doesn't Tell You, other places to learn how to take care of your health besides your doctor, in, 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 in addition to your doctor. How does your site 
inform people about what your doctor doesn't tell you? Well, you know, I, I even think in the Marcus Welby days or whoever that, that was, there are always different kinds of constituencies when you take control of your health care. I mean, a doctor is obviously profound and important, and it's certainly about the science. But I would suggest even in those days, people were consistently looking for people who have been there. I mean, there's absolutely no substitute for connecting with people who've been there. The previous panel talked about two constituencies, the patient and the doctor. And as you guys know better than anyone else, there are many constituencies, including caregivers or so on. But what always has happened in the offline world and has been utterly unleashed in the internet world is the ability to find many, many people who've been through that experience. They may help you on the science. They may give you a list of questions you ask your doctor. But the really profound stuff is when people just help you get through life in a real life basis, you know? We, we have in one of our websites just a wonderful experience where a woman wrote about how she shouted at her mother who had Alzheimer's, okay? The mother was a matriarch of the family, never would have raised her voice ever. And then five days, she finally got sick of her mother losing her car keys and she blew up at her. Now, is she a bad person? Is she a bad daughter? Do you apologize to your mom? Is your mom even gonna remember it? I mean, what people tend to forget when they get so wrapped around the science is that the real life experiences are equally profound. And they can help guide you in thinking about your treatment, but it also is, look, I mean, think about it. You're with your doctor on average 15 minutes a visit. That means all the rest of the time you're not. But you're still wrestling the conditions that you're wrestling and the ability to find that sense of empathy and contact and resources, I think was always there, but is now unleashed online. And certainly in our side, I mean, we've got 12 million people and it's all about the empathy and the connections and, and folks feeling I'm not alone and I'm feeling like someone who's been there is helping me get through this. It must be interesting to read those threads. I mean, to read people talking to each other. And I assume that woman got some advice sure. from, from the other members. Yeah, and like everything in life, if you ask enough people advice, you'll get 180 degrees of, of stuff. Some of the advice you get isn't good advice. Look, I, I have had a doctors who've told me the wrong thing to do from time to time. The beauty of the web is effectively uh, individuals now, and I think forever, are aggregating their truths. They're going to many different areas and getting many pieces of information, and they're gathering what they're doing in ways that they eventually can take actions. Of course, when it comes to the science and the treatment, there is no substitute for the doctor and the science. But this is a much more holistic experience, which is utterly unleashed by the technologies. Now, Adam Bosworth made two really important points, I think. One, he said there are two things that are not going on. One being that doctors are not doing evidence-based medicine, and the second is that patients are not taking charge of their health. Yeah. Can you talk about how your site would address addresses those two issues? Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. We're very focused on the consumer side of things. And so to the degree, we have doctors on our sites and we do some connections with the sites. And to the degree that the medical profession is willing to listen to what consumers are saying, I think that could be a very valuable resource that they're only beginning to tap into as they think about it. And it's true for a lot of the industries that are here overall. But I think at, at the end of the day, the really power about all of this is, again, this sense of connection and empathy, right? If, if a doctor tells you, take your drug, you know your doctor's gonna tell you to take the drug the way your mom tells you to do things. But there's nothing like somebody else who is, we were talking about this with this wonderful partner of ours, breastcancer.org last night, wonderful site who's a partner of ours. And, and I've gotta tell you, we talked about this. At one point, you wanna take a drug holiday. And there is no substitute for someone who's been there saying, of course you should take a drug holiday. I took a drug holiday, okay, time to get back. Time to come off of the holiday. And all evidence shows you that when people who have been there get together, the odds of losing weight, the odds of you staying on treatment, the odds of you engaging in your way in a very profound effort is a totally different kind of experience. But should you really be listening to what another patient says about taking a drug holiday? I think that at the end of the day, first of all, it happens anyway, so it's sort of a moot point. But secondly, again, if the connection is someone who's been there is not telling me because they're trying to order, because so many people wrestling particularly profound health issues really have a, a, a deep sense of loss of control. I think the net positive people telling you, I know what you're doing because I did it too, I've been there, but at the same time, now it's time to get back on it, is a hugely complimentary way that'll have profound impact on people's treatments. Your site has been up for about four years, yes, about and tell me about what lessons you've learned, what mistakes you've made, what you feel like you've done outstandingly well. I, I'm, I'm sort of with Adam, I mean, I feel like I make mistakes every day, and I don't think our experiences are anywhere near what they ought to be. And, uh, you know, our, our partnership and acquisition of Wellsphere certainly leapfrogged us in technology, uh, but there's always a lot more to do. I think that probably, and this sounds very naive to people here in the room, I, I think the biggest mistake or thing that I underestimated is just how profoundly nuanced health is. I mean, how many people have come to me either to invest or to think about life and say health is just another vertical? You know, it's like entertainment or sports or anything in that area. But, but you know, people don't think of themselves in a health category the way they're trying to find a date or sharing music or sports. 
Uh, it's very nuanced, very profound, a lot of different emotions. People come in and they come out. And if you're not sensitive to that, and if you're not sensitive to the infrastructures around it, you'll fail in the end. Okay, you have 30 seconds Yo. to answer a tough question. Uh, Roy Schoenberg mentioned wanting to know if customers are happy. That question, are you happy? How do you figure out if your customers are happy? It's a wonderful question, and remember, the very nature of certain conditions are for people not to be happy or to necessarily reflect happiness. I think happiness is an engagement and support, and it's wonderful to get the emails or the postings about how someone has made someone's life better, but the fact that folks keep coming back and engage and share stories, uh, you know, particularly in the areas of mood disorders where people could be you know, structurally down in a given period of time, the fact that they engage and they want to help each other, that's a pretty good sense that you're making some impact. Thank you. Thank you.